Welcome design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a candlestick and we're going to use a bezier curve instead of a CV curve this time. The bezier curve will give us a little more control over hard corners and you should be familiar with it from your work with Illustrator and Photoshop. So let's get started. I'm going to stay in the same project folder this time as I have been for this whole project. I'm going to create a new scene and then I'm going to create a new image plan and I already did an image search earlier for uh, candle holder shapes and I found this drawing here and I right click saved it to my source images folder in my project folder so I'm going to go ahead and click my folder here and that takes me straight to my source images folder in my project folder and here is the drawing that I want to use so I'm going to focus on it by pushing F on my keyboard and then I'm going to scale it up quite quite a bit and then I'm going to pick the one I want to use and put it right in the middle of the scene. I'll switch to front view and make sure I have it uh, lined up there and then in front view I'm going to select my image plane and change the texture filter from nearest whatever that is to bilinear and you can see that makes it a lot easier to see and then we're going to switch to the channel box and create a new layer so that we can freeze that layer and let's create our curve so let's go to create curve tools and this time we're going to choose the bezier curve tool and I'm going to start in the middle here and click out and the way I like to use Bezier Curve Tools is I just put a point, and I'm just clicking, I'm not dragging. I like to put a point where there's either going to be a curve or a corner. And then I'm going to get the Move tool, and I'm going to zoom way in. right click and select control vertices and you can see right here that this appears to be a curve I mean a corner but if I click on it and drag it you can see that it has handles control handles like any Bezier curve once you have one of these points selected you can click on the middle control point and hold down shift right click and then you can convert it to a corner or a bezier corner or back into a bezier curve. I'm going to make this a corner. And this one I want to be a curve. So I'm just going to click and drag that out a little bit. This one I want to be a curve. And you can move the point by clicking on the point. This one I'm just going to click and drag because I want it to be a curve. Same with this one. Now this one I'm going to click and drag. This one I'm going to click on it and um, just move that up to create that curve. Now this one, I'm going to click on it and create a curve. But I, actually I think I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to do the same with this one. And then this one, I'm going to create the curve, but I'm going to click on the middle point. But I'm going to shift right click on the middle point and create a bezier corner this time. And when I have a bezier corner, then I can manipulate it like so. You've got to make sure that these things don't get tangled up on themselves either. That one's backwards. And the reason I want that one there is because I want this to kind of go down and down and out like that. This one I would like to be a corner, so I'm going to click and drag on it. 
and then shift right click and make it a corner. This one I would like to be a corner as well, but you gotta drag it first so that you can access the point and then you can make it a corner or whatever you need. So now that I've done that, we can revolve our mesh. So let's switch to object mode, make sure the pivot point is right in the center here. If it is not, then you can push down D on your keyboard and move it. Mine is in the center. And then we're going to revolve it. Now when you go to revolve it using the surfaces menu, bring up the options. And if you're outputting a mesh, and we need to output a mesh because we might want to put this in a video game, but if you're outputting a mesh, you need to come down here and check polygons instead of NURBS. And then you need to change your type from triangles to quads. And then change it from standard fit, which is the default, to count. And then the more segments you give it here, the more segments it will have around the perimeter. I'm going to make it uh, 600 and click apply. And then I'm going to hide my reference plane. And now all we need to do is flip the normals. So let's switch to face mode. Select all the normals, shift right click, face normals, reverse normals. And it looks a little weird in this view, but if we switch to the perspective view, you can see that it looks perfectly fine. And now we need to smooth it, so I'm going to push 2 on my keyboard. Actually, I'm going to push 3 and see what that looks like. And I think that looks perfectly wonderful, although I might get my multi-cut tool and cut a control loop right down there at the bottom. And maybe one right up here against the top edge. And that is how you make a candle holder using splines and the revolve surfaces function. Of course, there are all sorts of different candlesticks like or candle holders like these, and you don't necessarily have to make one like this, but this is what we're after since we're learning how to use revolve surfaces and splines. In the next video, we'll make a candle, and I'll see you then.